Mkari yao. Yes, thank you. <coughs> For my voter from Busia, I think you are not on the ground. And if you are depending on the Auditor General's reports and reports of the EACC, you are totally lost. Those reports are heavily, heavily sanitized. I've engaged the Auditor General, I've rejected the reports on Busia. They don't reflect the reality on the ground. I'm pursuing 2.5 billion shillings lost from a budget of about 8 billion shillings, not 400 million. It's 2.5 million billion that I'm pursuing. Right now I'm in court, three cases with the governor in court. If you are aware, I was stoned in Busia. Gunds stoned me because I was trying to ask for documentation. I'm not the kind of guy who stands in funerals and begins insulting people. I follow the evidence. And fraud survives on concealment. Why would I, a senator for Busia, have to go to court, to take the governor to court, to be allowed to the documents? Yet the law requires that the documents should be on the website. You see? So there's a lot of concealment in Busia, but you are dealing with it not emotionally, but scientifically. And you are going to see people in jail. You are talking about the finance bill. When I went to court in 2018, you remember, some of you are old enough will remember, there was a time, around the budget time, people would hold goods, goods would disappear from markets, and then after the budget is read, they come back with new prices. The reason was, the finance bill became law the day it was read by the minister. In 2018, I went to court and challenged it. I won the case, and the court ordered the finance bill must be debated in parliament. That's why today you have had a chance to discuss it. You would not have discussed it. And beyond that is the budget itself. What is inside that budget? The finance bill is a mechanism of adjusting budget laws and any taxation laws. The real problem is inside the budget. When I saw the GNCs out, I was very happy. I still see that the GNCs, I go to the X spaces, and the GNCs are like people who are standing in a closed house and are looking through the keyhole, and they don't like what they are seeing. Some of us are standing on the balcony, and I would invite people to come and stand on the balcony. And that's why I'm saying, our problem, what we really need to do, let us implement the Constitution. The Constitution says the Treasury and the Ministry of Finance should be separate. Why, are they, why did the Public Finance Management Act bring them back together? So that the Treasury can be the pocket money for politicians. If we take the Treasury away and put it under professional and lock the key, you will drain the swamp. This money that you confuse us, it will not be there. So let us come and look aside. With the presidential election, the constitution is very clear. Where more than one person is cleared to run for an election, it also have the constitution open at 138 close 2, because I have the constitution here. You will find it says where more than one candidate is cleared for an election, an election shall be held in each constituency. We need to have results from each constituency publicized where do we go to bombers? There's a returning officer in the constituency who should be able to determine that election there. We should know that in the Madara constituency, candidate A got this, candidate B got that. And then even the media will be able to call the election and say, even before it is declared, they will call the election and say, from the look of things, Fulani Amangu Kanayo. Sindio? There's only the Kenyan election that you go and wait for days and days and days without even rejection. So, if we went down and said, okay, we are going to implement the constitution and the presidential election will end at the constituency and we will know the results, there will be no answer of saying who won, who did not win. When you come down to the Bill of Rights, let us implement it. Chapter 6, let us implement those things and demand that these things are done. The other question about uh, the EACC, let us also implement the law on the EACC. The EACC is not supposed to be fighting crime in this country. The EACC is supposed to be enforcing a code of conduct, that is chapter 6. Supposed to see that people are, people are reporting to work on good time, people are wearing uh, clean clothes, people are behaving well. Crime busting must be given back to the police. Let people not go to, to perform catwalks in integrity center. Let them go and sleep on the floor of the house. 
There is something in this country called mischaracterization of crime. And the elite have succeeded to mischaracterize two very serious crimes in this country. One of them is what we call corruption. It's theft by servant. It's theft by servant and they should be arrested by the OCS and put in police cells and be made to sleep on the floor. Not to go and be given three course meals at the ESCC. The other crime that has been mischaracterized in this country is robbery with violence concerning theft of livestock. We call it cattle rustling. We call it, an, we, call it an, we, call it, we call it a cultural activity. But people are snatched property, people are killed. So that meat can be, they can be snatched animals to come and sell them in Nairobi here. If we made it, if we made that crime robbery with violence and told the police, we don't want to see robbery and violence in this area. These things will end. So, me, what I played with you, let us get properly informed. And what I really need, and I'm happy that there have been some issues here that have come up, let us get properly informed. This kind of fora, I would like also some, some sections dedicated to expert work. Like if we were to sit here today and say we are going to do the audit of the public debt as a people today. We are going to do a people's audit of the public debt. And we list our debts from independence. And we see what have they done. And we apply the standard in Article 229, Clause 6, which says that we audit for lawfulness, and we audit for effectiveness. All the loans that the IMF has given to the President Ruto, all the loans the IMF gave to President Uhuru, never went to Parliament. Why? The appropriations bill, where are they in that bill? Even the Eurobond, in the 2015 budget, go and check, it is not there. So why are we being burdened with these things? We have, a, we have got a doctrine of odious debt, that can empower us as a sovereign people to say we shall only pay what we consumed and what benefited us. If the money benefited a regime, then the regime should be meant to pay. Or if we pay it, we auction the owners of the regime to re refund the, the state. <laughs> that if once we take that radical step, I'm telling you, there's nothing less than radical surgery in terms of the rule of law. Article 40, clause 6 states very clearly, you have got no right to stolen property. Why are people moving, moving around with stolen property? So let us go there, and we will be able to liberate our country, but let us first of all educate ourselves, and let us understand where the problem is. And if we implement this constitution, look at every clause and say, make sure it's implemented. Reject those who are saying that I made the law. There's no problem with the law. The problem is with the monkeys in the forest. Not with the forest. See, the monkeys in the forest were a problem, not the forest. So let us deal with the monkeys in the forest. Let us implement the law. And those who have stolen, even at call 225 close 6, says if you are in office and public funds were lost, whether if you are a politician or as a civil servant, you are liable even if you are out of office. Why are we not using these clauses in the law? Today, you are, if you read the business daily, somebody who, this guy was the interior, uh, uh, director of interior before the Ruta government came in, Kibicho, made a decision that's costing us about 6 billion shillings. Just by making a, canceling a contract and trying to, to make a deal. Why should he work free? Let him be auctioned so that they say, that's how we should go ahead. There is no middle ground. And everybody must account for themselves. And for my Busia fellow, there's no way Busia will be happy when Kenya is sad. The rot is in Nairobi. These governors who are rude and they cannot do anything are protected from state house. Let us deal with state house. Let us clean up where the fish begins rotting with. And that's why I agree with the issue that Ruto must go. <laughs> and it's not, it's not negotiable. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, let me first add on to that because I